Today, we will be drawing still lives in class. You'll need a sketchbook and a pencil with an eraser. The first thing I do is I'm gonna look at the proportions of the still life. Is it wider or is it taller? If you're seeing the still life from this angle, it's taller than it is wide. So I would turn my sketchbook portrait orientation. If you are seeing the still life from this angle, it's likely to be wider than it is tall. So I'm gonna turn my sketchbook landscape. The first thing I'm gonna do, now that I've established what direction my sketchbook is gonna be, is to figure out how can I fit every object on my page. I'll tell you how, with chunking. <laughs> so I'm going to use my pencil and my eyesight to help me figure out the proportions of these items. This technique is called sighting. I'm gonna hold my arm out with a pencil in front of me with a straight elbow, not a bent elbow. And I'm gonna look at that orange object. I'm gonna slide my fingers down. That's about how tall my orange object is. Then when I turn my pencil sideways, it looks like it goes to about here, which means my orange object is four times taller than it is wide. Let's test that. Slide my finger, it's that wide. One, two, three, oh, closer to three and a half. So I'm using the proportions I used from my sighting to help. So I'm going to lightly sketch. I'm gonna use a green colored pencil just so you can tell it apart from the actual drawing. I'm gonna draw those chunk boxes. Again, I'm not using a ruler. I'm just lightly sketching. It's gonna to come to about there. And I can double check this. A one, two, three and a half. Perfect. And I'm gonna work my way just out from that object. So my lowest item in the still life is this yellow one. It overlaps the green, so here's my lowest object and it's gonna fit in this space. It overlaps with that orange object just a little bit. As I work my way towards the right, I've got a nice blue object that I can even use my pencil and kind of pull from the bottom, and I can see that the bottom of the blue object is a little lower than the orange object. I'm gonna come across, and it's a little wider than that orange object. Not there, that looks good. And double check your negative space. This blue object comes up about hmm, third of the way up the orange one. Perfect. I'm not gonna worry about that little yellow guy in the back because I can't really see him. And then here's my green object. Again, making sure that he's not gonna fall off the edge of the page. I have space for him. Perfect. All right, coming over towards the left, I've got a red object. If I hold up my pencil like this, I can see that it's just a little lower than the blue one. I'm gonna come down a little bit and there is some overlap. Hold my pencil again. Oh, comes up almost perfectly halfway through my orange object. About that big. Lovely. All right, I got a purple object that's kind of overlapping behind it. Again, I'm double checking that negative space in between the purple and the orange objects. Negative space is important. It tells us lots of information. And then I've got this cool green bridge over here to the side. If I use my pencil again, it actually lines up pretty closely with my blue object. So I'm just gonna come across. And then he's got an additional shape kind of sitting on top. We'll just save that chunk of space for both the green and the orange objects. So you can see I've lightly chunked out the space. Now I can go back and double check some of the negative space. Does this feel like enough space between those two objects? I think it feels pretty good. How about this negative space in between the yellow and the blue objects? From here, I think they could be a little closer together. So I'm gonna bring this out just a little farther. Luckily, colored pencil erases a little bit. That feels better. Yeah, this space feels more comfortable. And I'm kind of looking at the staggered bottom heights. Is that reflect what I want in front of me? If you put every still life object so it's lined up across the bottom of your page, it's going to look very flat and smooshed on the page. We want this to feel like real life. 
All right, now I'm gonna come in with my regular drawing pencil and I'm gonna start sketching some of these objects for real. You can start anywhere you want. There's no wrong place to start. I'm gonna start with my big orange guy because I'm kind of spacing everything out from him. He's my main source of measurement. So drawing from the shoulder, not the wrist. Nice, loose, and light. Same thing down here. If there's an ellipse on the top, there's an ellipse on the bottom, even if we can't quite see it just yet. And connect. And I'm just gonna keep the part of the curve that I can see and erase the rest. At this point, it is super okay for you to have kind of hairy, scary lines because we're just lightly putting all of this information in. But at the end of the still life, we'll come back and kind of neaten and clean everything up. Working my way over this item in the front, he's like a little half circle. So I'm gonna draw a circle, not a circle, an ellipse, which is just a circle in perspective, and kind of find that top Give him a nice little domed top. And keep that bottom ellipse. Then I'm gonna erase that work on the inside so you don't see it anymore. Now notice my orange and yellow shape should be touching. Mine aren't, so I'm gonna bring my guy down just a little bit more. Again, we wanna be paying attention to overlap. That's better. Great. Okay, moving on. How about this pyramid? Now, he's just a little two-point perspective pyramid. His spine, notice this, I can hold my pencil straight up and down to see if that's a straight up and down line or if it goes at an angle. Looks pretty straight up and down to me, and it goes right to the top. Then he's on an angle, a V. Now, I can hold my pencil up at that angle and try and match it which is one really nice strategy. Or I can eyeball it. Again, I wanna pay attention. These shapes are overlapping, these two guys. So I wanna make sure that's happening here. And up to the top. Your chunk boxes don't have to be perfect. They're a guide for you to help you make sure you can fit everything on the page. This line's got a little curve to it, a little straighter. All right, so looking behind that shape, we've got this purple object. Let's see, from your vantage point, the spine is pretty far to the side. And he comes down pretty close to my yellow shape. He's almost horizontal, but not quite. My back edge is gonna match. All my other lines, pretty severe angle here. We don't see very much of the side. And double checking, does this space feel like it's reflected here? I think we're pretty close. I think this side of the box could be a little skinnier. Let's slim him up a bit. That feels more comfortable. All right, let's look at our green bridge. He's not as scary as he looks. So he's got a little spine of the box and we're gonna draw him as though that arch does not exist. We're gonna pretend for the moment, it's just not even there. Back edge. And I'm gonna draw as though I can't see the orange shape for now, I find that to be a little easier. Mm, yep, I can see that back angle. Okay, so now I'm gonna sneak that little curve in there. Can I see the whole thing? Almost. Now, if it were real perspective, I'd find that angle and I'd go back to the vanishing point. So this area is in shadow underneath. Okay, now I've got a little box on top. Again, I'm gonna start with that spine. That's about, it's about here. You know what, looking at the camera angle, he might even come up a little higher and he kind of hangs off the front. 
He is so close to being in one point perspective. He's just not quite there. Keep in mind, I have my own viewpoint. You're seeing a slightly different one through the camera. So mine may not look, my viewpoint may not look identical to what you're seeing. Again, erase some of that work. Does it feel like it's kind of hanging off the edge like it is in real life? I think we're close. Coming over here, we have a really tricky object, but from the front, he's not so scary. We can see just a little kind of sliver of the side. I'm not gonna worry about all those facets just yet. And he's got kind of a little curve on this side too. I'm almost gonna pretend like he's a cylinder for now. Cylinder with edges. <laughs> and then I can kind of angle those off. At this stage, that's totally fine. And we've got another cube back here. Again, he's on a pretty severe angle. I wanna look at how tall he comes up compared to this blue object. He comes from the bottom close to halfway, halfway through the middle. Make sure I'm matching that angle back there and that these angles are all going to the same space in the distance. Now, if you get this far, you're more than welcome to come in and do a little light shading. At this point, I would want you to come back and start erasing, tweaking, fixing up and cleaning up those hairy, scary lines. But this is our class goal, a light, you know, chunked out version of the still life in front of you.